The Queen's Gambit centers the life of an orphan chess prodigy named Beth Harmon from the age of 8 to 22 as she struggles with addiction in her quest to becoming a grand master in chess. Hey, how's it going, everybody? And welcome back to my channel, Movie Files. Elliot here today to share with you all my thoughts on the new Netflix limited series, The Queen's Gambit. I am so excited to let you all know what I thought about this series. And if you should check it out in this spoiler free review before we dive into it, as you can see on the screen now, make sure you're following me on all my other social media media accounts that way you all can stay up to date of what's going on over here at movie files if you are new to this channel welcome to the community make sure you all subscribe and while you're at it hit that bell so you don't miss any of my other netflix coverage other tv show reviews movie reviews live streams all the fun things we do on this very channel it would mean a lot if you all can give this video a thumbs up helps out the channel but i also really appreciate it and in the comments below let me know if you were excited for the show and once you've seen it let's discuss it your pros your cons your overall thoughts let's have a discussion about it in the comments below so The Queen's Gambit is a mini limited series on Netflix revolving around a eight-year-old orphan who has a tragic background. And while she's at the orphanage, she picks up on the hobby of chess and you're watching her journey as she becomes addicted to pills, alcohol. She meets different friends. She loses people and she's on her journey to becoming a master chess player. So what did I think about it? Well, we're going to get into it. But before we dive into my positives, my negatives, my overall thoughts, let me give you guys a little bit of backstory of who's behind the show and how the show came to be. Now, the showrunners behind this series are Scott Frank and Alan Scott. Now, Scott Frank is someone I've been a fan of for a while. I think of his scripts of Out of Sight, 2002's Minority Report, and more recently, Logan. So I'm a fan of his work, really excited to see him tackle this subject matter, which I'm going to tell you all right now. I'm not a chess player, nor do I really find myself gravitating towards that chess. I appreciate it for what it is, but I just never really dove into that universe. So I was really excited to see this universe being tackled by Scott Frank. But my number one selling point was by far Anya Taylor Joy, and we'll talk about her performance a little bit later, but also a little bit more backstory around this story. This was based on a novel that came out in 1983, and the novel covers themes like feminism, chest, obviously, drug addiction, as well as alcoholism, and also I found it really interesting that since the 80s, they have been trying to adapt this into movies, into TV shows. I mean, even in 2008, you had the incredible Heath Ledger who was going to make his directorial debut and have an Ellen Page being a star. So this has a really rich history in regards to being made. And now 2020, it's finally here. So what did I think about? Let's dive into the positive. So first and foremost, I mentioned Scott Frank being a fan of his. He did an incredible job of making this feel cinematic. It was incredible to see him capture this time period that he told the story over. This to me felt like Mad Men meets the game of chess. I felt like he took his time with the story. He told the story he wanted to tell based on this novel and I imagine he took some creative liberties. But I just really appreciated the pacing of this show. Again, I know this show probably isn't going to be for everyone just because of the subject matter, also the time period, and also the way they tell a story. But I was just really impressed by the backstory uh, of these characters and particularly uh, Beth's character but then how it surrounded Beth's character with a lot of other amazing supporting cast members, which we'll talk a little bit about later. But I was very impressed by Scott, and I thought he did a good job of, again, each episode was important. Each moment of the episodes were important, and it all kind of ties together, and it was just such a cinematic experience watching these seven hours of television. Which brings me into the actual story without any spoilers. I felt the development of our main character, Beth, who we'll talk about Anya a little bit later, was just so well done. It took its time in showing us who she was as an eight-year-old orphan and how she became to be an orphan. We see how she becomes a chess player, how she falls in love with the game and becomes obsessed with it. We see her being reliant on peels to kind of have her be kind of focused on the game. We also see the clear tragedies of her experience of being a young girl, how she came out of that we see the transition of her becoming a teenager and traveling the world or necessarily traveling across the state lines to play chess and then we see her in her 20s and how all of that kind of shapes her to the person that she is today I thought the story was fantastic I was engaged throughout the entire time and then as the show kind of unfolds you meet more of Beth you learn more about her backstory you see how her type of personality kind of maybe spreads on others and how she has this kind of cold approach kind of and, and it makes sense based on her tragedies but I just thought that the story was really engaging and and I was thoroughly entertained throughout the entire process. Now, a word that comes to mind when I describe this show is the word slow burn. Now, for some reason, I know for some people to each your own, the word slow burn kind of turns them off. They look at it as a negative thing. But for me, when I hear the word slow burn and when done right, I take that as a 
character development. It slows down, it drives into the characters, it dives into their thought process, it surrounds you with world building and lets you know where they're coming from. I think of the characters' highs, their lows, how they get to the point that they do, regardless of how they got there. I just really enjoyed the methodical, detailed approach to the storytelling. Again, it is a slow burn, but for me, it has incredible character payoffs when you get to that finale of the show. Now, transitioning into some of the incredible performances in the show, starting off with the supporting characters, I think of a character like Jolene, who's the best friend of Beth, and her meeting her at the orphanage, and her teaching her some things that definitely affected her as she got older, but also being a friend for her, for someone that came into this orphanage from having this tragic background, thought that Jolene was a really great character, and we'll talk about her a little bit later as well, but I think of characters like Bill Camps, the janitor who was integral into her learning chess, and how to play chess, and how to approach chess, I thought their relationship was really well done and then I think of characters like Benny and Harry the competitors that she meets on the way and how they start off as enemies but then they become friends I really enjoyed that journey but the characters uh, that I really loved in particular with Beth is the the Whitley family and how important they were but in particularly Alma I thought that the bond that they had was so beautiful and it was so important for the Beth character to have this character like Alma a mother figure in her life right and you know she had some mistakes as a mother you know growing up as her mother in regards to teaching her some getting into the uh you know the world of alcoholism uh but also just showing her that you can break out of the box you know without going to spoilers Alma was a clean cut you know wife in the 60s came home to feed her husband this that and the other but things kind of change and she becomes more of her own woman and I kind of love that story that we get with Alma, but that bond that they had was so powerful and it's such a great payoff too once we uh, see that story kind of play out. But those are some supporting characters that really stood out. But the standout, the star, the one of the best actresses working today in regards to up and coming, Anya Taylor Joy. Anya Taylor Joy as Elizabeth Harmon was fantastic. Uh, the performance that really kind of comes to mind, uh, two different performances, but I think of Florence Pugh in Little Women, the growth of like little Amy becoming the woman that she is by in that film was very similar to me of what happened with Beth's character in this movie, in this show, I should say. Starting off as this nine-year-old girl, which we don't see Anya Taylor-Joy portraying a nine-year-old, but we see her portraying a 13-year-old and seeing her growth from 13, 15, 17, onto her 20s was just such an incredible art to see and seeing Anya playing in a child, teenage mindset to growing to become the woman that she is to seeing women admiring her wanting to inspire to be her and how much she meant to women of that time was just such a great journey I think Anya Taylor-Joy is such a timeless actress you can plop her in the 40s you can plop her in 2020 and she is just timeless she is just such an incredible actress and for me personally this is the and I already think her career is phenomenal split you know Emma most recently but this is her best performance that I've ever seen of her young career and this is just one of many things and I'm looking forward to seeing her do, but I thought that this was an Emmy-nominated type of performance. Her as Beth, again, from the very beginning to the show to the end, I thought she was phenomenal through and through. So definitely some other things I wanted to highlight was I appreciate the authenticity of the time period they were in, whether it be the social class of how women were perceived, whether it be the costuming of Anna Taylor-Joy, which was on point. I mean, the, the costuming was incredible. Uh, the production design, the cinematography, the score was all incredible. A couple other things I definitely want to touch on is how they managed to keep someone that isn't a chess player interested in a show that let me tell you all they don't just briefly go over the game of chess they go into the minutia they go into the details i mean you learn about moves strategies the history of chess all the main players obviously some of them are fictional uh some of them are real chess players it was just incredible that i was so invested in a sport that i could care less about and again it's no disrespect to people that love chess and play chess for a living it's just that that's just not my sport that i gravitate towards so it was just incredible how i was so engaged in this story about a sport that i'm really not that into which as a sports fan it makes me think of i can still relate to that the story that i really love is the the idea of someone being naturally gifted and talented but having to sustain that talent that excellency and how we saw that kind of balance of Beth if she's just naturally great at the sport but she had to work at it consistently and it kind of 
overtook her. You, you know, Michael Jordan was very driven to be the best. Kobe Bryant, Tom Brady, you name it, Muhammad Ali, they were all legends and they had the natural gift like an a la LeBron James, but you have to practice at it. And you saw that kind of character development where she went to the highest extents to be the best at her sport. So I really kind of love that. Even though I'm not a, a, a chess player, I can still relate to that striving for excellence as an athlete. Something else I do want to applaud the show on doing is the time period in regards to we see a nine-year-old to a 20 you know, early 20s, right? So in that, they didn't recast a lot of the people that you saw at a young age to when she's 20. And I really appreciate that because they did a good job of de-aging, also aging up characters. Again, there is a moment of the show when Anya Taylor-Joy is playing a 13-year-old. And I believe that she was a 13-year-old as much as I believe that she was in her early 20s. So I thought that the idea of aging these characters up was beautifully done. And it could have maybe, they could have recast it, but I thought they did a good job of, like I said, aging and de-aging these characters without technology technology. They use good old practical effects and just using great costuming, using hair design to make the younger characters look older. So I really appreciate that as well. So before I go into my criticisms, this is a hit surprise for me because I think of shows like Devs, uh, Ted Lasso most recently on Apple TV Plus, and The Third Day on HBO Max. This falls in that category, which I knew I was going to enjoy because I love Anya Taylor-Joy, but I didn't think I was going to love it as much as I did. So all this praise, I do have some criticism starting off with, I applaud again the slow burn approach that the show had in the storytelling, but there were some moments where I felt like some of the characters and some of the scenes didn't really move the needle for me personally without getting into the details but I think of some characters for example like I felt like the show unfortunately relegated certain characters to just really being there for our our main character Beth and not really having an individual storyline and really not having that much character development for example Jolene is a perfect example of that where she pops up in the story but she's only really there as like the savior of the character and really doesn't have that much development within her own story I, I really appreciate the sentiment of how important uh, Bill Camp was as a janitor that taught her how to play chess, but I wish we would have dove deeper into exploring his character and kind of how he came to be a janitor, but he's just kind of genius chess player and how he never really took those skills and honed in on him to become a great chess player. I wish we would have dove deeper into that storyline. And last little thing here uh, on, on my negatives, the time jumping. The show every now and then gives you the occasional, you know, bold letters of what year it is, but they... If you don't pay attention, you really don't know how much time has passed. You have to listen to the dialogue. There's like little examples of the characters like, oh, I haven't seen you since last year's tournament. Or, you know, it's been five years since I saw you as a 13-year-old. So that's how the show kind of gave you the time. But I wish they, they would have found more creative ways of telling us what time it was, whether it be uh, a particular event that happened that year. Or I don't want to make it seem like, you know, the generic uh, you know, time code on the screen saying it's 1967, but I wish they would have been a little bit more creative in telling us what time it was besides it just being like in the dialogue. I wish it was a little bit more better in handling the time jumping. And lastly, there's, without spoilers, there's a big tragic thing that happens to Beth's character in regards to a relationship she has with a character that unfortunately the character passes away. I wish they would have focused more on that emotional impact to Beth uh, without getting into spoilers and I'll just kind of leave it at that but I wish that it would have showed us more how, how that loss meant to her no spoilers whatsoever so finishing this review up overall thoughts I look I know a show centering around chest isn't going to appeal to not a lot of people it's going to automatically turn people off to this show but for those that stick around that want a good story not only a revolving around chest but revolving around perfection, revolving around mistakes, revolving around coming of age, learning who you are as a person. What is it that you're going to do next? Again, this is a show about a prodigy chess player whose main goal is to be the best in the world at chess. But then what comes after that? I love that conversation that the show tackles. I found that all seven episodes were necessary in telling this incredible story of this girl who has a tragic beginning and how she deals with that and how she deals with loneliness to becoming a character, a person, a woman that women inspire to be, that people around the world look up to. So I love that coming of age story. And I thought again, Anya Taylor-Joy, the supporting characters, the direction, the cinematic experience, the story was beautifully done. So with that being said, I cannot recommend this show about chess called The Queen's Gambit enough to you all. If you all enjoyed this review, make sure you let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know if you're going to check it out. And when you do, let me know your pros, your cons, and overall your thoughts on this show. As always, make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss any of my other content. Thank you all again for watching this review, and we'll see you all in the next video.